right, Robin. Can you re right? Can you remember eighty three? I can. On the wood. I can. Right, yeah. when we started to see yeah. each other, and I think Anne and Lynn met first, didn't they? And then that's maybe, right. Maybe well, you come round to our house and you had a cigar, and that that's when I can remember. Yeah, well, Tom wasn't born at the time, was he? No, he was expecting. And was uh, no, he's, he's now twenty six now. You just that you hadn't long had Matthew, and that's I hadn't right. long had Danny. And I had the boxer dog George. The boxer dog George, right. yeah. We, we used to patrol the area with George. We used to keep it tidy with the area. Yeah. And then we acquired another, the the sister of George, Sadie. Sadie. She actually come and moved in with us because she found a way to our house. So me and Robin had very sort of. Uh, we found that we, we we was alike in many many ways. Not not only with our family makeup, but also the fact that we was both very um, fairly political in uh, how we felt about things. Was both fairly left wing. We both had a lot of trade union yeah. background. The yeah. pair of us. And um, prior to that, I mean, Rob, Robin was living nearer to us. It's just that we hadn't sort of. He lived near to us in Foxland, wasn't he? You'd moved a, a couple of years earlier, didn't yeah. you? And then when you moved to an house near us, that's when we suddenly took... And we found out we had a hell of a lot in common, didn't yes. we? I mean, it's strange, really, because Mick, who also became a friend of ours, his wife was the barmaid at the Yeoman. Mm. But Mick, over the years, would say to me on many occasions, he'd say... Um, you know so and so in the yeoman. Well, he knew everybody in the yeoman because he basically lived there, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And fair play to him, he got the free point because his wife was a bar. Mm -hmm. She was a good barmaid too because mm -hmm. she knew exactly who was next. And Mick would say to me, You know so and so or so and so. And I'd go, Where would I know him from? He'd say mm -hmm. the yeoman. It was as though I spent my life in the yeoman. Actually, I didn't spend my life in the yeoman. What it was, it was a meeting place, and because I played darts, a lot when I was younger and I, we used to I used to travel down the old area where I was born which was Small Heath and basically we'd travel pub to pub to pub to play that team at darts but I'd, we'd meet in the yeoman and then obviously then you and I started with the football then didn't we we, we sort well, of well, well you see the thing is Rob, Rob, Robin came originally from Small Heath yeah mm -hmm and I came from Aston and we found out we had more or less the same sorts of backgrounds didn't we? Yeah. So you know we, we, we just sort of... Be <laughs> well I was, I, was a, I was a shop steward at the age yeah. of 21 mm -hmm. uh, in an industry that worked for the National Coal Board Well, of course we had some right old times then because we all know Maggie Thatcher was trying to fight the unions and so forth and I became, I've got to be truthful, I became anti Maggie Thatcher because but yeah. she was taking away my she was taking away my um, you know a lot, lot of friends lost their jobs because of in fact Robin Robin's job went round about the same time as I was yeah. le le left my job at at, at, uh, at the Rover and I was also you know involved in, yeah. as a steward at the Rover and that and so we had that sort of it was a sort of camaraderie because you know it was and I think we sort of stood together against the well, state. We felt we, we had to, and it was uh, the background to it was that there was a lot going on then. Like you had the miners' strike. Oh yeah, the three-day week. Yeah. We fought against the poll tax together. Well, we the did. We I remember to, that. Yeah. Went down I to do. Solly Hall and we became Mackenzie's friends yeah. for the day. And made it, you and were warned that, twice. To, you overstepped the mark. I was warned twice. Yeah. Anymore, you'll be in the cells or something, wasn't it? Because we were yeah. there, there was people down there with kids, yeah. right? And they'd got they'd, they'd got them queued up in the law courts down there with little mm -hmm. kids, you know. And and there was waiting in these queues. They couldn't pay the money. This this poll tax that came out with, and there was putting them up against the judges. And the the, the, the idea was. Was that like they just dismiss them straight away? No, what's your excuse? That's no good. Right, next one. And these judges were paid a lot of money for that that money. So I, we felt through some of the lads as well who yeah. I, I introduced I to militant tendency at the time, which was a, a real left wing <laughs> movement that was uh, what they would say infiltrated the Labour Party. They ain't going to get into politics too much. But <clears throat> what we did was we became Mackenzie friends, and what you was you'd go in with these people, 
to put their case for them. You could mm. have talked directly to the judge, but you could tell them what to say and you could drag it out as long as you could mm. to make life as difficult you could so they couldn't get all through those people in one day. Two awkward a blokes you couldn't have had. And, the, and, and there was, that, we got the bus down there, didn't we? We yeah. got the bus, and the bus was packed with people coming from Chelmsley Wood who had been asked to, who had been called to court to explain why they hadn't paid, paid the poll tax. So it was a little bit like that, weren't it? it yeah. Sort of, we, we was together fight. I suppose you'd say we, we, we'd always fight the establishment to a certain extent. Yeah. We was younger then, no. And then, of course, obviously, R Ronnie's son. Uh, his youngest son is about the same age as my, uh, my what my second son, i.e. Matthew, mm. at about the same age. Mm. And then we uh, sort of, I remember, start. We took him to football, didn't we, up at uh, Master? Yeah, Green. we got him involved with the football, and and and, and, and you know, he was involved with the football at Master. So Green. a lot of our time. And was there used to football. be a van load of kids, you know, going on a little bit that came from Chelmsley Wood. Mm that were playing for Marston Green. Um, and to be quite, they won, a lot, they won a lot of things, Marston Green did, but they did. There, there, was a, there, there was a little bit of controversy that we felt at the time, because like, obviously a lot of these um, young football clubs with the kids and that, a lot of this is also a bit of a social club thing, you know? Mm -hmm. People who live in the area, and a lot of people who lived in the area of Marston Green, I'm not having a go or anything like that, but there was that sort of social club thing, and I think they was, there was, among some of them, some resentment that the kids who were really getting picked for the team and winning things was a group of kids coming from Chalmsley Wood, which they, you know, wanted to resented that a little bit. For the simple reason, it was like, you know, it's our social club, but the manager was picking the kid because that, that that's how those really. But that's that's another avenue. Really. But there again, then Tom, <clears throat> then Tom at the age of six, I was asked to take on the manager's job. It wasn't explained to me, so I'd got a group of about forty six kids at the time, and they didn't say what I'd got to do, which upset me at the time, was. I'd actually got to select out these 46, 14 kids, so I'd got to turn kids away. And I remember at the time, I thought, well, I don't really fancy it. I, that wasn't explained to me, so it was hard, because it was my idea. Anyway, eventually, I had to turn, there was a little bit of arguments between some people, well, why you picked him and why you picked him, and I, I thought, well, and, and, you know, you've picked yeah. your own son. Well, at the end of the day, of course I picked my own son, because that's the only reason why I was managing, because my son, was going to be in the team, but as Ronnie knows, it's funny now. Uh, twenty six, aren't they? And there's some that were twenty four, mm. and there's some that are thirty five. Some of them have finished football, but a lot of the kids still play football together we're, we're, now, we're, even though we're yeah. no longer involved. They they've we're got still, their own team now, and they we we went to a lot. We still know, we know a lot of kids now. Some of them in the forties, you know, not their dads. Coaching their dads, and dads are now. playing football now, and like they've known us for years and years. And their kids, we've got to know their kids, and yeah. uh, and, and that's you know that th th they know us so well. I mean, you know, I, I can, we can walk through the shopping centre. Oh yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There's guys like you know um, in the twenties, and that they'll be running away from the security guard, but they'll stop and say hello yeah. you know what I mean like because they know us you have to from also from Helen Ronnie, Ronnie knows this our local shop we we know we know some of the rogues as well and uh, they know we know and like you'll see things like um, for instance the other day I, I was up the shop and I noticed uh, there's a certain packet of cigarettes you can buy and you get in it you get some roll ups and I noticed they were throwing the roll-ups on the floor, same as they do with the change. And I says to this one lad, he asked son, he says, oh no, he says, I don't use those. I use the thin ones as if I'm daft, you know, and I just, mm. I just sort of went, oh yeah. Now I'd say, if he's 14 or 15, that's as old as he is. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but, but yeah, I'm just on about, yeah, yeah. but I wouldn't say anything. No. Oh, the same thing to but his mum. The, the thing is, times have changed since, since we moved. That you're going back when we go back to the seventies, right? You had a situation where, when the wood came about, yeah, it was a large looked. As, it was all looked on as Chelmsley Wood, to be quite honest. Mm. A lot of people moved from the inner cities, 
um, myself for instance I'd, I'd already moved to Gallus Green Lane Sheldon as a kid before I moved over there right but it was a different time and there was a different way of people looking at things there was a stronger community because a lot of people when the estate was built you had two major car factories close you had the Jaguar and you had the Rover the Rover the yeah. I worked at the Rover for quite a few years but I'll be honest I, was, I used to get on uh, that more on strike than actually actually <laughs> work but that, that was, as I said, that's bringing politics in it. And I can't help doing that because it is a big side of me, to be quite honest. But you had you had the JAG and the Rowan, there was big employers. You didn't have to jump hurdles to get a decent job with a decent wage. You didn't have to go with CVs and things like that that you do today. You didn't have to present yourself in a suit to some young kid. If you got a union card, you could get in at the Rover because that'd give you an introductory act letter, right? So you had those two big car factories which supplied the work for the people who lived on this council estate. Can I just stick that in the box? Yeah. I'm sorry, we're recording. Yeah. Um, so, so, sorry about that. No, that's okay. But, but so what you had was you had the places for the people to work and you had the dwellings yeah and that's how the community started up there was a pub on nearly every corner and the old community way of life which had come from the old areas first of all it was dispersed but what happened was over the year in the pubs because they're, they're going to the same factories together and then you'd meet in the pubs of a weekend that was a way of life in them days so when they moved them from the um, inner city areas and they moved them to, over to this way with all the new houses and all the new mud, what was mud, looked on as mud cones at the time, um, th there was, first of all, there was a dispersal, but then people could get talking to each other and find out they came from just around the corner somewhere else and that slowly bound the community together. And the community was actually banged together in the public houses. Now, you know, to, uh, you had a community in as much as if you went into a public house in them days, there was, and Robin would back me up on this, I think, there was respect for the people who were in there and there was sort of a code of honour. You'd go into these pubs, you know, and you, yeah. you, you, you'd behave because you'd have older ones who would soon pick you up if you didn't be at, and you'd have to explain yourself on the factory floor why you made a fool of yourself in the, not that people didn't always make fools of themselves when they'd had too much to drink but there was a sort of controlling factor there which I don't think you've got now but there was also Ron I can remember before I actually moved up onto Chelmsley Wood I can remember people who, who I worked with it was an older guy ex-army and he'd say to me do you know, Robin, I was up on up on Chelmsley Wood the other night in the Happy Trooper. He says, and there was spitting sawdust on the floor, which was a load of rubbish. He was telling me, I hadn't been up on the wood as such. And then I can remember there was a little song that was around at the time. And they all live in little boxes, little boxes, all the same. There's a white mm. one. There's, and it was all, and they used to say, and it's funny now, because I'm now seeing little boxes built mm. now that are smaller than what they call little boxes. But I'll tell you another thing, Helen, it happened here. It was just by chance, we were doing some storytelling run, and there's, I've got a CD at home, and I loaned that once to my daughter, mm. who lives over Bearwood Way, mm. and she actually teaches herself, and she says to me, she says, do you know, Dad, when I, when I listen to that, my, my husband and myself, you've actually got your own accent, Chelmsley Wood. It was only when she pointed it out to me that I actually noticed. Then I actually sat listening to, there was kids on there and all sorts talking, and they have actually got their own accent. There is actually a, a Chelmsley sort of accent. Now I speak to people when I'm away, they say to me, where do you come from? I say Chelmsley Wood. Poo, it's rough over there, isn't it? They call it the Chavez State. I said, well, that's a load of rubbish. I live there. So whoever's told you that, in my opinion, it isn't a Chavez state. You can go anywhere, you know, and you'll see various types hanging around and you think that that's the way people are. 
but it's not as bad well, as yeah. it's painted. It, yeah, well, it, it came about in '64 when they built the estate because of the inner city. A lot of families moved from the inner city. I didn't actually move from the inner city. I'd already moved out of the inner city in the '50s. Um, but a lot of the, and, and, and the mail actually took the took the place apart, as I remember. You know, they called it a concrete jungle, etc., mm. etc. I um, remember that run. And, but prior for that, the, what it, it, to that it was all it was all woodland. But I know that when we first come in, come over here, I, I had actually worked over here before I lived over here. I worked at um, a furniture store over in uh, over at Pine Square, Kenton's, and um, it was it was bad because people were moving into these new houses. They wanted the new furniture to come with it. Now nobody could afford new furniture. You didn't have the plastic cards and all that now. It was the credit, you know, you had it. And the biggest credit people, as I remember, were most popular over here at the time, I remember, was uh, Providence. Providence, yeah. So I, when I worked I in the furniture shop, like, you know, yeah. every, the, the trade was really good. You had about four furniture shops over there, didn't you? You had Kenton's, Williams, uh, there was two others I can't quite remember. Woodhouses was another one. Mm. But there's all selling furniture, and people were all having these new sets of these three bands. There was all having it on the Providence on the tick when they came over. That's what I remember. And I, I worked over there for a bit. That was before I actually, and then I moved over there. Yeah, I used to travel. They, they, they painted the grass. Didn't they? Well, what they yep. did. Oh, I remember. Was, what, I, what, what it was, they opened up for the uh, Majesty to come and have a look at this new estate. And the estate, there was mud everywhere because they were still building it. Some had gone up, some hadn't gone up. There was mud everywhere the eye could see, right? They hadn't got the buzzes totally off the ground yet. Mm -hmm. and, that. and when Her Majesty came over, they spent quite a lot of money, I believe, actually spraying the mud green. They sprayed, didn't they? Yeah. They sprayed the mud green for Her Majesty, like, you know. I remember that. Yeah, there's yeah, mud, I do yeah. Too. There's mud everywhere. And they sprayed all the grass green. Well, yeah. not the grass, the mud. That, so it looks as if there was grassy areas, and that. See, when I used to catch the one seven one, that used to be the bus from Small Heath up to Chelmsey, would it would go such a route round. That's in this court, you know, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, and it would go to the Marston Green Tavern. That's it, yeah. And then that was my sort of first look at Chelmsley Wood as, as like a visitor before I actually moved up onto Chelmsley Wood. Um, how many pubs was there? I mean, how many oh, can you remember? Oh, gosh. I'll tell you, the I pubs that were on here, there's gone. hardly any now, but there was the Trusty Servant, the Happy Trooper, the Southern Cross. The Yeoman? The Yeoman. What else was there? The Bluebell. Uh, what? The Friendly. The Roundhouse. What was the one down the Bosworth, Bosworth Drive that's now gone? It's been uh, a few the things Prince since. Al. Prince Al, that's right. Prince Al, we can name all them, yeah. you know. The, the old Aquarius, well, that was a blue Well, that wasn't was the, it the was the Aquarius, then the it was... Ica. We was in there the night, the Ica. Yeah. Do you want to hear about that? The Ica. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> okay, it is a story. You, you might want to watch it this like, you know. I mean... There's a lot of things with working class humour at the time, not, they're not very nice, but when you look back nostalgically, you find you laugh at them. And that, that is something that's deep within the tradition of what I see working, like black working class humour, isn't it? So this is probably one of them, but what it was, it was one night, and it was getting, my own Robin says, come, we'll go and have a, the last pint. Mm -hmm. I've got to say a bit of the history of the eye can open up. Yes. And there was a pub round the corner called the Hiker. Yeah, you remember it, right? Now this is as I remember it, and this is how I think Robin remembers it. Right, the, the, it's a it's had really gone down the Hiker as and as used to start having a load of problems. And me and Robin, on the odd occasion after football, would pop down on a Sunday, mm -hmm. wouldn't we? On the Sunday afternoon, yep. if the match was in the morning, we'd pop down. And we might have the odd point there, right? And it got to the stage where it had become a real hoedown. I mean, we'd, you'd be in there and there'd be nothing for someone to come through the bar <laughs> on the bike, on a bike with a dog attached to mm -hmm. a lead. You know, I mean, it was... It's true. Um, and at the night time, it got to the stage of water, you just had to breathe in everybody. You'd be as high as a kite. You didn't need a, you didn't need a bike, no, did you? you didn't. 
and we, we only used to pop in after the, for the, the, the for the odd point you know, and this this particular night oh what they'd done first they'd bought um they bought that guy didn't they from the other pub yeah. it wasn't, wasn't it boating day brothers no so that was another incident that was another incident wasn't it yeah what, what they'd done they bought in this guy who was well known i forget his name he was he weren't too tall but he was very wiry and thin and apparently he was like a troubleshooter. He was brought into this is what we heard to sort out pubs. He got it, and they brought him in to sort out all the problems in the pub. And he did, didn't he? Mm. And how he, he did. did it, he brought in. Oh, this is I remember it. I believe he had two Alsatians, mm -hmm. one or two. I, I remember it as two, but you know, it can be sort of. And he also had a baseball bat, didn't he? He did. And he used the. I mean, the dogs would be off at the counter like that, and he sorted, cut the story short, he sorted it all out and tidied it up. And um, we used to be doing well, we used to use it at the time. And then they they moved him onto somewhere else to sort out another pub. Or That's right. Pub, yeah. And they moved this other guy, because I thought, and he was an ex policeman. That's right. right. And it was right. like, it's all sorted out now. No problems in that pub, but the only problem is that anybody went in there now. See, and who tried to put the law down? It just didn't work with him, did it? That's right. And what happened that night? I don't know if you want to take over. We went in that night. You're on about the time the, uh, yeah. the one time was in there, and that guy come in with the dog. And I there was a couple of times. The, 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 the time I'm on about is when we went. We, now we went in. If you remember, yeah. And it was just for the last point the last pint and we went up to the bar and he looked worried sick that's right and he said and we said well, what's up you know and that we didn't know him that well we'd only been no. a couple of times since he took over and he says he said I can't lock the pub up tonight didn't I he that's said right. they've pinched they've been upstairs pinched the video and they've pinched this and they've, they've got the keys to the pub that's right and um, there was a, there was a group of them all sitting in that table, weren't there? <laughs> That's right. It's a bit of a long story. Do you want me to? Keep going. Yeah, sure. Okay. So that I picture the scene. There's hardly any lights in there. It was really dark in this pub, right? <laughs> and one or two of the users had come back in, so it was dark. There was a smell of dope in the air and whatever. And this group of guys were all in the corner, weren't they? That's young, young I guys. remember it. And um, when he says about, oh, I can't lock up tonight, one of the guys shouts, you, 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 you're even talking about us, are you? No, no, not you, he says. No, you're okay. Do you want another pint? <laughs> what? And, I says, Is it? And, and he says, um, well, you know, you know, could be down, could be down, you know. But it, that's what it was. Now, at the time... There's this old chap who was sitting, he was standing up at the bar with his, what we presume was his wife or his partner, mm -hmm. and they were both absolutely drunk as kites, right? In the corner, in a dark corner, was a little old guy, he must have been about 17, he was sitting there with a little, a little glass of ale, wasn't it? That's right, I remember it, wrong. And apart from that group, that was about all that was in. And all we wanted was a point and to go home. And he was really worried. And um, the, the guy, you know, the barkeeper. But, well, he, and, and this guy who'd had a drink who was with his wife, he was really baiting him. He was saying, you're a coward. You ought to go over there and tell him you ought to sort him out. He thought he was, and he was really getting annoyed. And as he came, he came round the bar to get the glass, glasses, pick up a couple of empty glasses from the tables, and as he got near this guy who was with his wife, what did he do? <laughs> he had a property, he had a property, but he was a, he was a big guy, this, the, the owner like, you know, and he, he'd been in the police force and he was no fool. And he moved out the way and he hit him. Well, he went, oh, like this. His wife went hysterical, you know. It, and he was apologising. He says, look, I'm ever so sorry. He says, you... Yes. This, that, and the other. A lot of language was used. And we calmed it, the situation down the best way we could. And then we thought, well, we only wanted to come out for the quiet part. We didn't want all this, right? And, he's, 
and, and anyway, he apologised to the guy. He said, I had to, I, I had to eat you because she was going to eat me, blah, blah. What I'll do, do you want a drink? I'll, we can have a free drink. He says, and you two guys. And, you know, he says, oh, all right then. So <laughs> we, had a, we had a free pint. And he also said to all these guys at the table, because he was, you know, a little bit concerned. Like he says, he says, yeah, drinks are on the house. So we took them pints over too. So it we resumed, and I said, "Look, we'll have this, and you know, maybe we should go." Like, but we couldn't really because this predicament we was in. We didn't want to leave him on we his own. We didn't want to leave him on his own. And, and you know, it had been suggested, "Why don't you call the police?" And he said, "Fool, oh, you're joking." He said, "My life wouldn't be worth, you know, and all this." So we said, "We'll we'll, we'll, we'll stay and just see how it goes, and hopefully, you know, there's no that sort." And the guy who had had the punch on the nose, right, he was all seething up in him, wasn't he? Even though he had got his fruit pot. Well, when the bar guard came round to pick up a glass again, he did no more to, to hit him again. And this time he caught him, didn't he? Yes, he did. But he grabbed hold of him, and it, they all just went on the board of the wife. Right? And it was, oh, it was just madness, it was. And we tried to pull him apart, right? Robin then off. fell on top of a guy. This old guy coming in. And then to all him. of a sudden, uh, Robin had this, uh, he sort of held the guy down, like, because he was, well, was going to kill somebody, you know, and, and, and all hell had broke loose. And then as I remember it, this little old guy, yeah. on the corner with a <laughs> cap on, much like the old now, right, he'd been sitting there with his little cup. It was like someone's had a Batman. I'm not joking, out the dark, like the Cape Crusader, his Mac came up and he flew from this table and landed on Robin's back. <laughs> it, it, it was as if he just, I can see, now he probably yeah. wasn't, but as I remember it, he just sort of came from, he'd been sitting there all night. <laughs> he came from nowhere and he, he landed on Robin's back. He didn't know he was on his back. No, I've As he came out back, Robin didn't know. He brought his fist back like that. I saw what was happening and managed to grab his arm before because this blow was about eight. And, and that was the last night in the He talked, sort of calmed down, and he says, Look, I'll buy everybody a drink. We only went so, in for a point. We only went in for a point. And it was one of the strangest situations to be in. There was the, the, the gaffer of the pub with his nose and an handkerchief, giving people points for free. Right. <laughs> there was me and Robbie, this bloke and his wife, right? This group of about eight or nine people got, they were called over. I don't know, there was a few, was it that six, seven, something like that? Yeah. There was quite a few. Yeah. They had yeah. come over. The atmosphere was terrible because you didn't know when it was all going to take off again. And we all just stood there looking at each other, drinking these pints. And the very next day, we heard he'd, he'd left. Yes. And now apparently, he had just left the place as it was. We never heard of him from him again. No. But sorry if that was a long story, but, you know, you might have to sort of cut some of that out. But, um, but... You know, the, the, but it's one of many incidents over the years that have happened. Yeah, well, there's also the other time in there <coughs> when that kid came in with a dog, and I've been a dog lover all my life, and I remember oh. putting my hand down, and he went, one owner, one dog. And I looked at him, I said, that's not the way I brought my dogs up. But it was his attitude, as if he wanted this dog only to be touched by him, and I just found that strange. You know, but you know, that, it, it, it sounds as if it was bad over here and that, like you know. But it, but it, 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 there was a sort of regulation. There the, the was a regulatory factor in all the pubs, weren't there? The I mean, you know, it, it, people say there was trouble. There weren't trouble all the time. There wasn't as much trouble as, as you have now. I wouldn't say. No, the pubs no. and that, you know. I wouldn't say so. But. Um, you know that, that that's what it was like. But there was a pub, and that was what the the, the community was mostly in in the pubs. Um, I don't know if the years it's changed, hasn't it? But you haven't got that same community thing. And I think a lot of it's got to do is I mean I would put it down to the fact that you haven't got like the manufacturing industry and that. I think it's all over the country. You haven't got that community thing. But I don't want to go on into that because I, I, I'll 
you know, I'll be going into politics and all sorts of <coughs> rubbish, you know. Yeah, there was happy days, Ron. I was a lot younger then. We had a lot of, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun over it, you know. Yeah, but they used to, the people who do uh, what they used to call uh, the midnight fritz, wouldn't they? You know, couldn't pay the rent or things used to. Yes. You know, a little bit. They'd just go the next day. They'd leave the curtains. So that was a well-known trick. And we knew, like when I was working at the furniture shop, well, it, that it, was a <coughs> trick they'd do. You I know, mean, you have a load of furniture oh. delivered. <laughs> You've been there longer than I have, Ronnie, haven't you? you in, in that particular area, because I remember, I remember you telling me, uh, because that's where the Jubilee '77 comes to mind. That's oh. where I was, with, because I remember you saying certain people, um, basically, there were certain people who, because they didn't work, they weren't going to be invited to oh, the Jubilee party, by, which I thought was rather sad. Because at the end of the day, the community, you, you invite everybody. And one particular chap, I won't mention any names, of course, because he's still around yeah, and I still see him. That, that was but wrong. I thought, well, how can you turn somebody away because they're unemployed? I mean, imagine it now. Most people are unemployed, aren't they? So if you're going to have a you're gonna have a street party or something like that... We don't every, regulate the job market. Everybody, bloke, everybody's welcome. the job you know. market. No, but that 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 jubilee was really weird for me because like um, I I I'm, I'm sort of to be honest I'm an anti-royalist at heart and um, well there's a lot of other opinions you know and they talk to but I'm no fan of the royal family or or, or the you know or that sort of hierarchy that that um, supports the class hierarchy that that supports so when it was the jubilee you know I when I I scoffed at it. But you got to remember, I, with, with all my little kids, they're all having a party. I'm not, the, the, the kids come first and they ain't going to miss yeah. out on that, you know. So um, we got to organise. My wife, um, who isn't as far to the left as me, she's become more left wing than now over the years, very bad to me. But then, you know, she says, well, I'll organise it and that. And she put a lot of work into it. And I, I sort of did join in, but, you know, I mean, um, that's what it was all about, the Jubilee. But he brought the brought them together a little bit, I suppose. But but not much. You'd soon neighbours a neighbours in they like, you know, and they had the fallouts and that. But um you know, some would say it was great times, that Jubilee thing. But they, like what Robin says and I remember, you know, one or two of the neighbours says, Oh, he hasn't put and that really upset me because like but I made sure he was all right anyhow. It was a normal sort of day for me because I remember dropping my wife off. She'd arranged with some friends because it was um, a party that she did the same. She was taking Janine, funny enough, to this mm. to this um, jubilee party somewhere over Marston Greenway, and I remember dropping her off. And I think I went fishing. Did you? Know I think that? I went fishing. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like Ronnie. I'm I'm, I'm sort of anti royal That's me. It's like. That goes back to my grandma, you know. She would, she would say things to me. Because mm. I spent a lot of time, I've said before, a lot of time with grandma. She taught me, and I said, I remember saying um, before to you, Helen, uh, <coughs> I was on about the class thing, and I remember asking her, and I've mentioned this before, and I said, where, where would I be in the class of you know, people? And she'd say, look, in my opinion, she said, there's nobody above you, and there's nobody beneath you. We're all the same. That, that was what my grandma used to say. Unfortunately, Helen, I've got to now look, and there is a class of people now that I will say are beneath me. It seems to be the, the way they might deal with things, you know. Like, there's a lack of, know, there's a broken they, community they're sort of now, sad and, and to people see aren't, aren't, they don't seem to sort of, um, you know, we have to all work yeah. together really to survive, and, you know, that, prob that probably doesn't go on, but there's a load of reasons that, you know, if we went into that, you wouldn't be getting the right interview out of us, you know what I mean? Because we'd be going into all the politics and that a bit, like you know. But going back, like to the to the wood itself, like you know, um, yeah. I mean, people moved over there, and they had all the sort of, let's see, you know, a lot of them had moved out of sort of the inner city. You know, he didn't even have a bath. You know, he used to have the community toilet. You know, well, we had know. hopper buses as well, didn't we? Run at the time, they were like hopper buses that. You could hop on, obviously, and it would take you to a major bus route, we'll say. Mm. So 
It's, you actually used to come by the everywhere school, didn't distance, they? Because uh, this... not everybody had cars yeah. everywhere. Was... Yeah. So I, I, my brother came on the wood before me. I mean, sadly he's passed away over the years, but my brother came on the wood first. I remember him getting married, and um, this is when we lived down Garrett's Green Lane. He uh, he went. He did a year. He did a couple of years at Bucklins, and he came back and said he'd met somebody, and uh, and, um, uh, and and they got married, and they moved over to Chelmsley. Wouldn't I remember as a I was about sixteen at the time, and I remember coming over here on a bus. I think a, a Midland Red bus. That yeah, was it. it was came a Midland over Red. Here on yeah, a Midland Red was. Bus. And it was like, oh, Chelmsley Wood, it's miles away. Oh, it's, a, you know, it was, isn't it, up the road, really? We used to come over here on the box when we was kids, like, you know. But um, there was hardly any bus service when it first started over there, was That's it? That's right, really. Yeah, Point Square was, um, do, do, oh, they had a, an old discotheque over Remember the discotheque? I do remember the discotheque. The hard discotheque. rock discotheque yes. and the bingo all. It yes. was on Pine Square. Do you remember yes, that? I do remember it. And that weren't good. That that there was trouble there every every Saturday night. There was trouble at the hot. I mean, fancy calling it the hard rock. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> but they had the bingo all as well. And I, as I remember this bingo place, I mean, bingo is not one of my favourite things, you know. But what it was, <coughs> they used to sell the drinks at half price. And I remember there was quite a lot of laddies over here, older guys. And knew the school that used to um, just go up there for the drinks because you could have, you know, I knew a lot of Scotch folk fellas who went to the Rover and that, um, that, that, that used to come over. I remember one Danny Bell used to, he was a really hard uh, Glaswegian who had moved down there some years ago. And I remember he took me under the wing and he went out with him for a drink and Jesus, he, 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 he go to the bar and, you know, and he used to say, what you want, you know, you don't matter what you said, you'd always get in the same anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he, 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 he'd get a he'd get a boot, he'd have a little vodka with it, and he'd knock the vodka back. He'd say, Get us a couple of vodkas. And I don't like vodka, I tell you, it's not one of my, I like whiskey, but I don't like vodka. But he'd say, And I said, No, I'm all right, Danny, like, you know, and he'd say, Vodka, you know what I mean? Like, and it, it, it said, Vodkas first, and then put the vodkas on. And, um, I'd say, no, I ain't touching it, Daddy, because I've always been like, you know, if I didn't want to, I'd say, and, and it, but it was his excuse to have the two of them, and he'd drain the two before he started on his point, you know. And, you know, they used to do that in the dinner hour at the Rover, when I was in the car factory. We used to drink on the, the dinner time at the Rover. Christ, oh, how some of them cars got put together, I don't know, on the afternoon, because we'd go in the clubhouse, you know, and it was... They used to call them the Friday card drinks. Remember, oh, the fr this this was put together on a Friday. That's why it's a load of rubbish. The, on the third, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was. On the Thursday, when, then, I was, when I was on the night shift there on the Thursday, this is in the seventies, yeah, right? Um, I remember going down there, all dressed up. And in them days, there you had your platforms and your, you know, and there was me. I was the same as anybody. Not a young married guy, weren't I? Like you know. But Thursdays, like many, many a time, you turn up in all your glad rags. They got paid your wages at seven o'clock, and everybody come in glad rags, get wages, <laughs> and the governor say, "You stay now with their with their bloomers there. The country now for going to, you know, that's what it was then. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, as regards the car factories, a lot of you know, some older guys who didn't work in the car factory." would turn around and say, you oh, bloody unions, they ruin the place and that like, you know. And maybe, there was a lot of bloody mindedness between the management and the union, you know, it, it, and that's why you had, you had the problems. But it was an happy place to work, I'll tell you that. I but, don't think it is now when I talk to guys who work well, in the When we used to go on holiday with our families, to go didn't to we run I remember. We used to go. Well, me and Robbie, over the years, we, every year we used to go on holiday together. Didn't we? Oh, we did, we've yeah. Some, we've had some good holidays. We've had some good holidays together, didn't yeah. we? Over the years. Yeah. And then people used to misconstrue sort of Chelmsley Wood. They'd, they'd get totally the wrong idea of it. But they used to think that everybody in Birmingham, when you went away on holiday, worked in the car factory and were on mm. good money. Yeah. So they would put the prices up. We used to notice, didn't we? Somebody would go, say, somewhere like Rill or Great Yarmouth or something. Mm. And then when we went there, the Brummies, it was like 
all the brummers are coming, they've got plenty of money because they all work, everybody in Birmingham apparently works in the car trade. Oh, yeah. But that's it. So you had loads of money. So the prices went up. All the prices used to go and up. I, I used to say, well, we were told that the beer and was, then, it'd be then, another 50p yeah. or something like that, you know. Down yeah. in the 70s, yeah. we had a, the people like had moved over here and when they'd been getting a somewhat decent wage for a few years, mainly in the car industry. Because mm. it was, if you got in into the roller, you know, oh, you were somebody. You, you know, got I, a good I got in there through my brother-in-law. I went down Broad Street, got a job the trade union. I think it was three pound I paid or something like that. Or was it? The, I think it was the old money. I don't know. Can't remember. But but you, 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 what you do, you'd go, you pay to join the union. They'd give you a letter of introduction. Once you got that letter of introduction, you got the job. You took that down and said, look the union the same we're introducing this guy on the track you got your job my bro my brother-in-law got got me a job there like you know but i remember like when we first got married just before we moved over to chelmsy wood no sorry before i got married i, I remember i remember the old house down there we, we, you, you, to have a bath you had to light the fire didn't you you know and i remember if you'd done nights you come back, there wouldn't be no water for a bath, so you'd have to go down with sisters who had a emergenator for a bath. Like, you know, you finish the night shift, you wanted to have a bath, like, you know. So, after you'd finish it, the 12 hour shift, you then had to go down to my sisters to have a bath before I could even go home to get my head, <laughs> my head down, like, you know. But there was a, there was a great community for you. The, the, the area I, I think was a good community anyway and you had you had some everybody in them days as well so many had nicknames um, you still see some of the old guys now older than us I mean there's Mick the Mower Mick the Mower he I used to yes. come round and he used to make his pennies by um, mowing everybody's garden he's still knocking about yes he is right there was Gypsy Bill John the Bus I mean, there was there was bad th there was, you know. I mean, it wouldn't be stone for now. But I mean, John the Buzz, for instance. I remember what the joke was with John the Buzz. I'll, it probably only happened a couple of times, but it becomes a bit of a, a myth. John the Buzz was known as a bus driver, and when he was doing the route over, he used to park his bus in the friendly car park while he went for a drink, and then get back in. Uh, you know, I'll, it probably happened a few times, but. Oh, he done it all the time. Yeah, that, that, that's probably. Yep. And then you had um, Squeaky, didn't you? Remember Squeaky? Squeaky. Yeah. It's Barley Wine Ann. Barley Wine Ann. Well, the reason she was called Barley Wine Ann, you can imagine, <laughs> basically, she'd go into the yeoman, and oh, basically, yeoman, yeah. she would be there most of the day drinking barley wines. And, uh, the Roundhouse? The, the, the Roundhouse, round I do. Round and remember, yeah. they had the pub called the Aquarius, which has now been built on. Well, when that first opened... <laughs> yes, it was a strange pub. It was a talk of the town it was when it first opened. the Roundhouse. They had one of these... Um, <laughs> What, what did they, they, they on those little film shows in yeah. there, didn't you? Yeah. Where people would put the money in the box to, to watch a strip T show, like, you know. And um, that, 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 so that was popular for a time. Do you remember, I know you'll remember this, do you remember my neighbour, Teddy Dykes? Oh, Teddy Dykes. And Teddy Dykes, he, he was Teddy one of these Dykes. guys, you, you, you always felt that somebody else was doing something he should be doing or something. <laughs> he weren't being that to that he, was he? He was into the, the what was it called? The C B, the, the radio. Oh, yeah. So I've got to on. tell you this. I was in the back garden, his daughter who lives next door, obviously she's in her back garden. He's walking along the top of York Minster. But and he's going back garden on, and he's, he's, on, he's on his C B and talking. he's going, Catherine, can you hear me? Over. Catherine, can you hear me? Over. I thought, well, we can hear you with that. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he was mad with it. Oh, yeah. He, he, and my, me and my missus were chuckling down there. So, well, anybody can hear him. He doesn't need, yeah. the, doesn't need the radio. But he was one of these guys, and he always thought everybody else was up to something. He was you about know, six. I'll tell you what, he was yeah. about six foot two. Yeah, and he wore he Cuban heels. But on top of that, <laughs> He wore the platforms in the 70s. 
if, 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 you know, it's about them platforms because if you was walking down and you'd pick up speed, you know, it's, 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 he was. It's a compass now, that is. All right, Roddy, how are you? All right, we were, we were actually you, talking that about that the other day, actually, oh. because now the trees are up because that we're, we're secluded now and we are trying to keep those trees because um, it gives you the privacy from basically the road mm. uh, and anybody most people walk by but that particular evening as I say when he was shouting into his <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of remember that programme that used to be on 10-4 Broderick Ten Crawford four, yeah. you know, Highway Patrol <laughs> yeah remember Cause, the, cause the one now but <laughs> he moved many years ago but the one now we got really into it and from his house it looks as if he was in touch with Martians yeah. or something yeah, he, he, had, he had aerials all over the place <laughs> Then there was a guy who made the wine. I think there was another guy who moved in. He was in there for a few years, and he was always working on his on his car. And I remember coming home from the rover, I'd come home, and he'd always be there on his with his overalls on, working on his car always. And um, I remember the one she said to me, she says, "You work at because I'm a lot younger than you." So, you know, and, he said, he said, you work at the Rover, don't you? And I says, yeah. He says, you can come and have a look at my car. I says, I don't know nothing about cars. I've got no interest in cars whatsoever. And still haven't, actually. I know I, you haven't I don't haven't know run. nothing about cars. I mean, to me, if somebody come, drives up in a big car and looks around and thinks, oh, they're all noticing my car. I'm not. Cars are red, blue, black, green. You know, they get you from A to B, you know, all these sorts of... But he says, oh, you can, and I says, I don't know nothing. I didn't have to, to work on the track. But this guy, I remember the ones, like, he says, uh, I make wine in the 70s. Everybody was got into wine making in the 70s. And um, he says, Come round and have a look. And he took me into his house. <laughs> it was top to bottom wine. I'm not joking. Every room downstairs was full of wine. Every, his airing cupboard, his cupboards were full of wine. Upstairs in his bedroom was wine, wine, wine. And I'm not joking, literally, water ceiling wine. And I says, right, yeah, yeah. He said, I've got this, got elderberry wine, I've got blackberry wine, I've got this wine, I've got blah, blah, plum wine, every wine you could name. And um, he never offered me one drink of that wine. I never had one glass of that wine, like, you know. And when he moved, he had to, the, 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 there was one removal van for his wine. And I, but the best part about it is, I said, I said, what's the wife say, drink it? Oh, I never drink it. <laughs> And that's the remember that yeah. never drank, never touched. He said, I "Don't drink." I don't. Nobody was drinking this stuff. He was just making it. There was another guy who used to come into the yeoman as well, and he used to make um, his own pickles. Oh, right, yeah. But he'd yeah. come in as though, and he'd, he'd eye them yeah. under his coat, and he sort of <laughs> yes. like there was, as though there was something secret, you know, about. <laughs> secret pickle man. Yeah. Somebody, somebody <laughs> give him, give him the money, like, and he, he'd sort of. Then he'd go out and he'd come back in with another jar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was he was sort of, and uh, I remember him. And I used to say, oh, I'll, have a, "I'll have one of them because I like the yeah. I'll do my own now." But at the time, I remember I remember sitting in the pub opening. Don't do it to me, do you? Uh, <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, I, I remember. I remember the friendly, and and, 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 and my brother used to drink with uh, some older lads because my brother was about six, seven years older than me. And I remember they used to meet in the friendly, and then they used to go over to Surrey Hill to play. They'd play up really. There was no trouble or anything like that. But I remember a few nights I went with them, and what they'd do, they'd meet in the friendly for a drink. Gypsy Bill was one of them. <laughs> he looked like a gentleman, <laughs> Gypsy Bill. <laughs> there was a few about the Gypsy. Who was the other one? Legs, Gypsy Bill. Legs. Did they call you Budgie? Yeah. Because what it was, when I started on the car track, there was there was a there was a, there was a, a thing on the television with Adam Faith in called Budger. Budger, and he used to dress with all the the gear. You know what I mean? The the what's it? Uh, flares and all that business. Like and these coats they really looked the part at the time. You look back, you think, Jesus, what was I wearing? That's fashion for you. And I used to dress like that, you know, that's what I used to do, do, I used to dress a bit when I went out like, you know. And um, I got working with a Scotch guy called Big Jock Strachan, and that's a story to tell. He was he was about six foot four, and he came from right up north, like, you know. 
And when I start seeing the card putting it on my eyes to get in at the roll, but maybe we can cut that out, but I did right. Um, to get the wage, to be honest. And um, this big jock strap and like I said, I was working with him on the um, headlines. You know, yes. Right, and he sort of took me under his wing, like, you know, as a young, uh, uh, as a young lad. And um, he was he had this really strong Scotch accent, like, you know, and me dressing in this way. They, they used to, they, 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 yeah, I got the nickname Budgie, but everybody out there was Joe 90. Still see Joe him 90. about Joe 90, yeah. Gypsy Bill, uh, Minnesota Fats. There was all sorts of names. Uh, the Magpie, <laughs> the Magpie, because they reckon you couldn't put anything down, you'd have it away, you cup, your spoon, your tea, your tea bags, they called him the Magpie. He had these great big eyes as well, the Magpie they called him. But I remember, uh, we go down to the uh, on a Saturday night in the summer. We go down to the Friendly Inn. I remember meeting down there. There'd be Gypsy Bill and all these characters. It was uh, Tat. Tat, Tat, it was Tat, yeah. Tat. Yeah. And then we, we used to we used to drive over. One of them used to drive us over to Solly Hill and drop us off at the wine bar. We used to do a little wine bar over there. And um, we was all fairly, you know, politically left. I've got to say, it was all sort of to the left. And we purposely go in the, the wine bar there, over in Solly Hall in the summer. And of course, there'd be all the sorts of um, well to do, you know, the people who were, especially the, the younger guys whose parents were really well ill. And we'd go in there and we'd, we'd everybody would take it in turn to order a bottle of wine. Tiger Milk was one of the favourites. And we'd, we'd sort of take, we'd sort of sit in the town and slowly, you know, have a few to drink. But the one guy, well, he got a little bit silly, really, I suppose, because he he used to purposely sing, you know, start singing revolutionary songs and stuff. <laughs> he used to upset everybody in there, like, you know. But that, but but it was a key, it was a community. Everybody looked after one one another, you know. I don't see that today, like, you know. Yeah, there's a, there are a few, aren't there? I mean, me, me and you. I mean, I'm I'm actually looking after my neighbour at the moment. She's in her eighties, and unfortunately, she lost her daughter young, and then she inherited her granddaughter, who unfortunately now she can't look after. Her, so she comes and visits. Mm. But I, I keep an eye open for her and put a bin out for her because she's fell a couple of times, See, and you know, little things like what, that. What, what were you saying, Robin? Had um, well, first of all, he had one dog called George. And uh, oh, it was a fabulous, it was a big um, boxer, red and white boxer, yeah. And it was, it was a, a great dog, it really was. And um, if my daughters wanted to go anywhere, or Robin's daughters for that yeah. matter, they just pop round to Robin's and take George. George was, you, you, you could walk anywhere with George, I could, you didn't even, yeah, he'd just do as he was told. But, but you know, he wouldn't let anybody pick or have a go. And they used to, if they, if they had to come out late one night, we'd just say, oh, but take George with you, like, you know. Well, Janine, actually. And you had another one, didn't you? you had, I had Sadie, the sister, cat. come to my house. She she found a way, I don't know how, well, we inherited her, but I know Janine was take going back well, uh, on Chelmsley Wood, near to the Aquarius, mm. she was walking George, and a young lad thought it, who knew her from school thought it all amusing to jump out the bushes. Oh, no. <laughs> the worst thing he ever did because the dog didn't bite him. I went round and saw the pen, but my dog just knocked him to the floor. I mean, but that's what the dog's there for, you know. And he, he I went round to see his mum and dad and said, you know, I'm sorry, I don't class it as a bite. He said, no. He says, I've told him how stupid. He says. I took the dog round and I said, yeah. this is the dog. I said, my dog's not vicious. But everything was control of that. I no. mean, I'll tell you what, the, the school, I know you've heard this before, um, but it, 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 the, the, the Bishop Wilson School, that big school field, during the school holidays, right, all the kids in here, we used to, and, 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 and other dads had come to, yeah. they'd all take them over to the field, we'd have football and all sorts, rounders and all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah. You know, um, and in our area, 
we had hardly any trouble you know what because there was such a big group of kids and they respected bishop wilson's school they looked after they it, looked they? after the school plan you never they, they didn't vandalize it or anything no. like that and group kids wouldn't come from other areas because there was too many of our lot you know there were no gang people they were happy there. Days, though, right. there were just kids who were all community and, 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 and it's a shame really you look back i don't know whether that'll ever you'll ever have that again well, it, you know? that that's partly due, uh, Ellen. That um, I mean, obviously, times are changing. They've got a new school now, and Ronnie and I have got an interest that we would like to, you know, after we're gone, that a, a certain amount of that ground would be left open to to use, even if it was for like a tabletop, uh, you know, charity thing, or um, if someone wants to get rid of some brick brack instead of having a car, they could go over, walk over there with a the table, and you know, to, and also. It'll be somewhere for the kids to kick a ball about, or just this is what we're trying to get. And obviously, we'll we'll wait and see what the future holds. But uh, I've got fond memories of, yeah, of when, yeah. when, as you say, that's what I liked. It was funny enough when they started to get a little bit of trouble on the old Bishop Wilson site. Amazing was when they built the new, which are now the old at the top. And they, there were certain kids started to mm. mess around on the roof, didn't they? And but our kids then had sort of grown the, where they the monitored they it. The area, but they did, they, they did they respect really the, area. the area. I mean, to have a river there with fishing, I can remember going down. You couldn't do that now. I remember going down there, and I remember some kids walking through the river saying, "There's no fishing there." And I thought, "Well, there's not going to be with you wading through it, is there?" You know, yeah. it, it wasn't the brain of Britain. And my dog was under the bridge. Mm. and he went I'll have a look in your tackle box and the dog would come walking out I said I don't think my dog would be too happy when he looked at me he was off <laughs> so I mean it was quite cold I'd say what I would remember when I first came on the, on the wood I moved into a masonette and it was down um, it was down near the, uh, the, the the trooper pub yes and there was a little shopping centre there I mean that shopping centre is completely gone down there to what it is I think most of the shops are closed I there, think they know, have run now yeah. sign of the times but um, I remember it was ever so cosy when we first got made there was me right we, we was in there and it was Friday night Lynn was uh, where was Lynn working Lynn was working I was working but Friday Friday night like was our we'd finished the week's work and he was there and, and we'd get our Debbie to bed and I'd go down to the fish and chip shop Get some chips. That was Friday. And you could, you could, that's it, yeah. And and and, and you, you'd be the most. You could look into the precincts and you could see the, the trooper. And um, we used to watch the, uh, we used to, you know, watch him come out of the trooper and sometimes a bit of trouble and that and some sort of. But, but we were there. We were just just used to watching. And I always remember the, 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 the name times. I'll always remember they used to have the hammer. Hammer House of Horrors. Yes. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And because um, I, I tell you what, when I, I was doing nights at the time, and when I finished on a Friday morning, right, I weren't no good till Saturday. I was completely out of it. I couldn't do any, you know, I just wanted to sleep and rest. Because it was 12 hour shifts on the on the bumpers, I was, I was putting bumpers on, mm. the, on the cars. And um, I remember that at Hammer House of Horrors used to be on and Lydia said, I'd watch some of these and I saw him to bed now and Lydia used to say to me, she'd say, because well, she loved to watch it. I said, well, don't go to bed just yet. And then I said, no, I'm going, I'll go to bed. And then when it finished, I'd hear the lights go off and she'd... <laughs> <laughs> Run along the, you know, the, fact that the, the hallway to get in yeah. <laughs> It's funny you should say that, Ron, because there's a programme on, I haven't watched this series around, but I think it's called White Chapel. And my missus said to me, I said, I'll have to catch up on that. She says, oh no, it's a bit too scary for me. She, she actually said that to me. I haven't, I haven't actually watched it because there's been other things. I mean, I don't know if you've seen that, um, what's it called, the... With the, the, with the cap in the small leaf with the razor blades oh the Pe Peaky, Peaky, blinders. Peaky Blinders it's been on about Birmingham and the first one was on last Thursday and I I mean it, as, as Ronnie and I both watched it it's glammed up a bit a lot but, a lot but it is I mean I, I, I know yeah. because you see what it is about Birmingham me, up until what five or six 
or leave, or, or, you know, leave that, that area, um, Summer Line, just off Summer Line. And Summer Line, there's a song, there's songs about Summer Line. Anybody will tell you about Summer Line in Birmingham, it was a well known street. And I was talking to Gordon the other day, and he used to live in a part of Aston, further over by um, Aston Park. And he says that he's a bit older than me. He used to go down there with his mates of a, of a Saturday night to watch them come out the pubs and watch the fights. They used to have bare knuckle fist fights and all sorts down there, like you know. But that, that sort of Aston background. Summer Line and th those old houses and the back houses and that, it, it, it really has had an effect on me as an older person, I think. And, and, and the programmes that Robin's on about, like that Peaky Blinders and stuff, you know. I, I mean, I used to hear about that sort of stuff off because all my family came from down that way. Mm -hmm. And there was all around um, the BSA, Small Heath and uh, Aston and Summer Lane. It's one, it, it's one area. But you know, it, 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 there were there were tough times and that. But it's always stayed in my head about the stories you used to hear and that. I mean, from what I can make out, the, well, it is. I mean, they sexy it up, don't they? Now what they call? It. I mean, they've got this young guy in it who looks more like a pop star, you know. I mean, what I know of the Peaky Blinders, that that they were they were living in poverty really, and a lot of it is myth. They didn't have razor blades really in the caps. You know that that's that was brought about, and I, without going into it, I could tell you how that what I've heard how that was brought about. But um, that they were they were people who were really really struggling. You know, it's not, strange, not, not really, Ron, um, because I my my wife actually came from the Garrison Garrison, Garrison Lane and indeed the ca over uh, Garrison Lane side thing, where I wife, came from. The other side, right, my wife. This is the, the best part of me. Look, this bit funny how way of life is because my wife and Robin's wife that apparently they went to the same school and That's nursery right. together they yep. lived in the same they place did. down Garrison yep. Lane and Going back. Artillery Street didn't they? Yeah. Down Small Heath so they yep. came from the same place didn't Because we they? had what you've got there where the Iron Man's head is now you've got Gattel Road to your left Gattel, yeah. and you've got Garrison Lane to your right so one goes to one side of Birmingham City Ground and the other one goes to the other side and onto the Cove Road and the other would go down to Watery Lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I say, how it's changed. Well, there used to be a pub where the Iron Man's Head is now called the Atlas Pub. The Atlas Pub, yeah. And I remember as a kid, it was sort of, it actually stood out because it was sort of on the Y and as you'd stand at the front there, it sort of had a, a bit of a look about it, that pub. Yeah, and when it yeah. went... The area changed, like they yeah, are changing I mean, now, and yeah. it's I, I, when you see an old pub go, personally which is speaking, like you know, Victorian right? and what. But when I see the old Victorian styles, <laughs> I think they're brilliant. I like the way they dressed in, you know, the nineteen hundreds yeah. and that. I, 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 you know, you know the old starch. Well, it's actually coming that, back really. as well. You're getting the forties dressed back now, aren't you? Sort of, and I think the women then. Had what you call like an hourglass figure, whereas now they try to achieve to look like a broomstick, you know, you know. But but I preferred the the curvy shape of a woman, you know. When you had Marilyn Monroe, and when we was a kid, I mean, my dad's favourite woman was um, <laughs> Anna Blackman. He it was something our dad would sit there and say, "Oh, he says, oh, he says." I love that one. I was always quite sad about that cup, you see. <laughs> no, your, no, your favourites. What's the name? The, the woman with the brains? Carol Vorderman. Oh, I do like Every, Vorderman. You sort of always <laughs> said, you could teach me maths. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You used to say that, Carol didn't you? Vorderman, well, yeah. she's a nice looking lady, yeah. but yeah, it's funny that. <laughs> Carol Vorderman, yeah. Was yours, was, Joan, that one who used to be the caddy on. Joan Sims.